one A there, or A one, however we want to call it. Let's call it A one. Yeah, in the upper left corner. So you're supposed to tell me whether it's valid or invalid. And if it's invalid, if it's not valid, which one of the rules of inference uh, it fails to meet, which causes it to be invalid? So there were four rules, remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, let me tell you the rules first. Um, at least one premise must be affirmative. And That's right. If, there, if there's a negative premise, the conclusion must be negative. Right. The middle term must be distributed at least once. Mm -hmm. um, whatever is distributed in the conclusion must be distributed in the premises. Perfect. Okay, now which so one are we looking at? Take, so we're looking at A1 and A1. just apply each of those rules in order to A1 and tell me whether it passes or fails. Okay. Um, the premises are affirmative. So okay. that was the first one. There's no negative mm -hmm. premise, so um, it passes that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, what's in the the dist what's distributed in the uh, conclusion is also in the premises, and what was the one about the middle part? The middle term the middle must be distributed. Distributed at least twice, and it is. So it passes. Okay, at least once. It's not distributed twice. There is right. It's only distributed once. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it only has to be distributed at least once. Mm -hmm. So we're good to go on that count. Uh -huh. So uh, just to be clear, uh, it said whatever is distributed in the conclusion has to be distributed in the premise. What exactly is distributed in the conclusion here? Um, the S and the P. Okay, is P distributed? Um, okay, no, S is. Just S. Okay, great. Just so, S. yeah. So you have like basically four rules of inference for syllogisms and four, uh, you could say, rules of distribution or the chart for distribution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To do this, you would just need to remember what the middle term is, how to decide what the middle term is. Mm -hmm. um, and the chart for distribution. And the mm -hmm. four rules of inference. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you don't really need to even have, you know, remember the chart for distribution because it's just a matter of understanding the concept of distribution. If you understand the concept of distribution, then uh, you would be able to, you know, uh, fill out the chart. But one way to do it is to memorize the chart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you see how thinking has kind of two processes. You know, one is to understand the principle by which mm -hmm. the various, you know, instances are what they are. And another is to actually memorize the various instances. <laughs> yeah. So if you memorize mm -hmm. the chart, you may not understand distribution, but at least you'll be able to apply it correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you understand what distribution means, then you don't need the chart. But mm -hmm. either way, it's, it's, it will be will function for doing what you need to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, understanding, of course, is better than mere functioning. Right. Mm -hmm. let's, let's try B1 then. How about that one? B1. Mm -hmm. mm, no S is M, no M is P, no S is P. Um, is, is, is there an affirmative premise here? I'm sorry? Yeah, well, that... that's a good, that's the first question. Is there an affirmative premise? And uh, it starts with no, so I'm assuming no. Well, you're right, no. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the negative premises are no S is P and some S is not P. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, mm -hmm. The affirmative premise, uh, the affirmative proposition forms of, of categorical propositions are all S is P and some S is P. Right? Mm -hmm. So here there's no um, affirmative premise, so it fails. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. So C1, try that one. Some S is M, that's affirmative. Right. Um, and then the other rules, okay. There is no negative premise, or is there? Um, nope. No, there isn't. Mm -hmm. um, the middle term must be distributed at least once. Let's look at the middle term. Um, uh, some S is M, some M is P. Mm. Mm. 
Yeah, it is. The middle term is distributed at least once? Some S is M, some E, yes. Well, which, which premise is it distributed in? Okay, wait, let me, let me think about this. Oh, wait, no, this one is so confusing, but it is not, it's not. Right, it's not, yep. Yeah, so, I don't understand why, but the, the sum and sum, that's undistributed. Right, it's undistributed, right, because in, in any case, we're only talking about sum M. None mm. of these are telling us anything about all members of the category M. Yeah, right. right. Well, yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, there, it, though it, so it fails, right? The middle term is not distributed. Mm -hmm. mm. You can see why it fails, right? I mean, uh, some S is M and some M is P, but it may not be the case that any S is P. All the S that is M might be different than the M that is P, right? Yeah. Or another way right. to put it. So if some S is M, then it's going to be the case that some M is S. Yeah? They'll be mm -hmm. the same. The S's mm -hmm. that are M's and the M's that are S's are the same. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we're going to say that if, you know, just because some S's are M's, uh, or in other words, that some M's are S's, you know, the mm -hmm. M's that are P's might be totally different from the M's that are S's. So that none of the ones that are S's are the ones that are P's. And it will be the case that no S is P instead of some S is P. So the two premises don't prove that the conclusion is true. You see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so try D1. D1. Mm. Mm -hmm. There is no affirmative premise. There's no affirmative premise. Good. So that fails. Okay. Then try A2. <clears throat> um, okay. There is an affirmative. And there mm -hmm. is a negative a premise and a negative conclusion. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, the middle term now. Um, all S is M, no M is P. All S is M. Um, yes, it is distributed. In which premise? The first one or the second one? Um, in the second one. Mm hmm Good. Good. All right. So, what's our next rule? Um, hmm. The third rule is whatever, okay, the distribution is in the conclusion and in one of the premises. Um... So what is distributed in the conclusion? S. Okay, just S. And P. Both are distributed, right. Okay. And is S distributed in the premises? Yeah. Yes, and the first one, right? All S. Yeah. Yes. Is P distributed in the premises? Um, yeah. Good. So looks like this one's valid, right? Yeah. <clears throat> all S and you if you if you read it it makes total sense, right? All S is M, but no M is P, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if there were an S that is P, it would have to be also an M that is P because all S is also M, right? Mm -hmm. But since no M is P, no S could be either. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> okay. Um B two. Try that one. Okay. Um there is an affirmative, and um, the conclusion is a negative, and so is one of the premises. So it passes mm -hmm. the first two, um, and now the middle term and the distribution. Um, no S is M, some M is P. Um, mm, okay, it is distributed in the first one. Mm-hmm. And then that's all we need, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um and then the third rule is um whatever it's distributed in the conclusion is also distributed in the premise. Um some P is not S. Uh uh, be, um, okay, the 
the P is what is it the P or the F that's distributed? Um, well, the S is yes. The S is distributed, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so the S has to be distributed in the conclude in the premise somewhere as well, right? Yeah. Is it? No, S. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this one looks valid. It passes all the rules. Yeah. There's an affirmative premise. Uh, there's a negative premise, but there's also a negative conclusion. So that's the second rule. The middle mm -hmm. term is distributed in the first premise where it says no S is M. Mm -hmm. And whatever is distributed in the conclusion, in this case it's S, is distributed in the premise there where it says no S is M. Right? Mm -hmm. So good. We're good to go with that. So let's just review the – this is a good time, I guess, to review the <clears throat> distribution chart because mm -hmm. that's the last most unusual uh, uh, proposition when it comes to distribution. Some S, some P is not S in the premise that form or a proposition that form, I'm sorry. The S is distributed, right? Mm -hmm. Or when we put it on the chart, it will be some S is not P, yeah? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the letter, again, doesn't matter. The position – of the variable in the proposition is what matters, right? So if we were to say some P is not S, or we were to say some S is not P, or if we say some X is not Y, or some A is not B, or some UGA is not WAWA, whatever sound or symbol we want to put in there doesn't matter. It matter what matters is the position of the variable in the proposition, right? Uh, so in the chart, we use S and P in that order, and so we're going to say some S is not P, in that case, whatever variable is in the position of P there, then not P, it will P will be distributed, right? Okay. So in all S is P, S is distributed. In mm -hmm. no S is P, both S and P are distributed. Mm -hmm. In some S is P, nothing is distributed. Neither S nor P are distributed. But in some S is not P, P is distributed. Simple, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Uh, try try C two then. <coughs> okay. Uh, there's an affirmative and a negative conclusion and a negative premise. Um, mm -hmm. and now distribution. Some S is M. Some S is M. No, that's not okay. The other one. Some M is not P. Some, um. Okay, P is distributed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so P is distributed, and then the distribution. Okay, where did it go? Oh, okay. Some S is not P. Um... Oh, okay, yeah, it passes. Uh, we're talking about C2, right? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, well, what about that middle term distribution rule? Is the middle term distributed? No, no, it's not. The P is. Mm, the P is distributed and not the middle term. Okay, so this one fails, right? Right. One fails. Mm -hmm. So, right, when you do these, it'll be just, you'll see it's it's invalid, and for the reason that right, uh, I have is an undistributed middle term, yeah? Mm hmm and if it was valid, you can just say it's valid. So on your answers, you could just say A1, valid, right? Uh, yeah. B1, uh, invalid, right? Uh, for the reason that there's no affirmative premise, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, C1, uh, invalid because the middle term is not distributed, right? Mm -hmm. And so forth. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we, <clears throat> let's do D2 and then we'll leave off. And we'll go to the next ones, right? Uh, so what about that? Okay, there is an affirmative premise and um, and the conclusion and one of the premises are both negative. Um, mm -hmm. And now all S is M. All S, yeah, well, um, no, the middle term is not distributed in this premise. Are Some you sure? Keys. All S. No, actually. What about that second premise? 
Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm thinking about the second poem now. Some mm-hmm. P is not M. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, okay, so we're, we're passes that one. Okay, and then right. C is not S. Um. Well, the. Uh, the S is distributed. That's right. And is it distributed in the premises? In the first one. In the first one. So it looks like that one is valid. Yeah. Right? Okay. So uh, let's go down to these because this might be a little bit now more uh, challenging. Because it's mm-hmm. the same thing except for uh, in prose rather than variables. <clears throat> right? Mm. So what you need to do here is to be able to see what the actual form of the proposition and the form of the argument is, you know, underneath all that prose. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because this is part of it. I mean, nobody talks in S's and P's, right? <laughs> yeah. And none of that means anything until we give it content, right? When uh-huh. we give it content, then it applies to the world and we can use logic to apply to the world. But, you know, we have to see the form and that content, right? And that's what we're gonna try to do here. So it's the same thing, but you need to tell me what conclusion, if any conclusion, can be inferred validly from the two premises, right? Uh, And if not, you know, why, why it can't be. So this is like one. Mm Mm-hmm. So first one says here, everything on social media is public and everything you post on Facebook is on social media. So Um, we have two categorical propositions, right? uh And Uh basically uh, all what the first one is of that form, all S is P. But here, Uh right, uh, social media is S and public is P. Except not really, right? Because remember, well, if we want it to be clear and describe the middle term or refer to the middle term with a variable m right Mm -hmm. then what is the middle term here and this if if this is an argument or if this turns out to be an argument what would be the middle term um pub public okay well what is the middle term in a syllogism let's go back to just that basic definition of a middle term Um, okay, a middle term is, um, uh, it's, it's the term that's in the premises, but not the conclusion. Right. And it appears in both premises, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So which term appears in both of these premises? Um, social media. Right. On social media. Yeah. Okay. Okay, We have the conclusion here. Okay. Yeah. Of course we don't. Right. So uh, any conclusion from this, which could be valid, would have to incorporate two terms. Public is public Mm -hmm. and you post on Facebook, right? Because Uh social media is the middle term. It only appears in the premises and not the conclusion. Uh So the first premise is that form, all S. I'm sorry. It'll have to be Mm -hmm. all M is Mm -hmm. S. We can put it that way, right? All M is S because we know social media is the middle term. Uh All M is S. And everything you post on Facebook is social is on social media. So all P is M. Right. Uh So now we have those two. Uh, Now let's apply our rules. We know we have an affirmative premise because they're both affirmative premises. Right. Uh Yeah. Uh, We know that the middle term is distributed. Right? Mm-hmm. Or is it? Yeah, social media is the middle term, right? Yeah. So and we have all is. M is S. So the middle term is distributed. Okay, the other rule says that if there's a negative premise, the conclusion has to be negative. Right? There's no negative premise. There's no negative premise. So what do we know about whatever conclusion might come from this? Uh, that's going to be positive. It's going to be affirmative, right? It cannot be negative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And then we also know that whatever is distributed in that conclusion has to be distributed in the premises. In, in the premise, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's put it together here. We know from first rule, the one about the negative premise and negative conclusion, that mm -hmm. the conclusion of this would have to be affirmative. Mm -hmm. Right? That gives us two possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose it gives us four possibilities. Yeah. All S is P or all P is S or some S is P or some P is S. Right? Mm hmm are you with me? I am. Okay, so it's we can basically maybe we can do a kind of a process of elimination from those four possibilities, because those are the mm -hmm. only four possible valid conclusions, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Right. So, can you come up with it? What would it be? What might be the, um, the conclusion? Um, okay, well, should we first try um check and see which of these does not have um what's it called um, um something that is distributed both in the premise and in itself? I'm sorry wait, wait. Okay, I'll start with all SSP. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, um, in all SSP, S is distributed, mm -hmm. and P is not. Right. Um, and S is here is what, public. Yeah, I right? haven't even named S and P. S is public, mm -hmm. and P is. No, we, on Facebook. Facebook. You, Facebook, everything you put or what you post on Facebook, right? Uh huh. Yeah. So um, our, our first premise is all M is S, right? Uh -huh. So yeah. is S distributed? In all M is S? Yeah. Um, no. No. So, so our conclusion cannot be all S is P because that would be distributed in the conclusion yeah. and it's not in the premise. So we can mm -hmm. try all P is S, right? All P is S. Um, P is distributed and um, mm -hmm. and S is not. That's right. So is uh -huh. P distributed in the premises? Um, all... Yeah, it is. All right, so it looks like we have a conclusion, right? All P is S. Mm -hmm. Everything you post on Facebook is public. Mm -hmm. So we would have a valid argument. Everything on social media is public, and mm -hmm. everything you post on Facebook is on social media. Mm -hmm. Therefore, everything you post on Facebook is public. Mm -hmm. It makes absolute in clear sense when you just put it like that, right? <laughs> yeah, and probably you could have arrived at the conclusion in a – you know, quickly and yeah, in a valid way, just by by looking at it that way, and let's say employing what we would call common sense, right? Yeah. But that common sense is kind of like your logical intuition. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. The reason that you would know that that follows is because well, it does follow, and that's sort of how your mind works. You know, we applied the rules meticulously, right, and then did this process of elimination to kind of arrive at it. And the kind mm -hmm. of what seems like a roundabout way, yeah, mm -hmm. and which really is a roundabout way in this case, you know. And so there's no, of course, need to do that if you can arrive at it with your sort of logical intuition, as we call it, right? Someone says everything on social media is public and everything you post on Facebook is on social media. So everything yeah. you post on Facebook is in public, right? Obviously, huh? yeah. But the problem is that a lot of times we make we make we make fallacies, right? We make fallacious inferences. Mm -hmm. We think they are our logical intuition seems to tell us that that it's a valid inference, when it actually it's not. And so mm -hmm. the real reason for the rules and to apply the rules is to you know carefully check that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when you when you do other ones, you'll see how that's the case. Some of them that seem to be valid won't actually be valid. 
-hmm. And some of them that don't seem obviously valid will actually turn out to be valid when you apply the rules. And mm -hmm. so just basically what we're doing is taking a natural ability that, you know, let's say most anyone has who has a kind of somewhat developed, you know, uh, rational mind uh, naturally, and then, you know, sort of expanding it and perfecting it, refining it through the, you know, the sort of formal process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So try the second one. Okay. Um Everybody has the right to free expression. So that would be all SSP. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Well, um, let's say well, we have to have a middle term, right? So one of them yeah, has yeah. to be well, M. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and some will have the right, know how to use it wisely. Um, right, it would be right. Some who have that right. So which right is that? That's the right to free expression, right? Yeah, free expression. When we're saying that right, we mean that one that we just talked about, the right to free okay. expression. So those are the those oh. two are the same terms. Yeah. Mm, it's free expression. Yeah. Um, what if okay, we do so it the opposite way this time and you just sort of look at it and read it and then try to see what your logical intuition, so to speak, what your common sense tells you, and then we'll test it after that. Okay. Um... Everybody has the right to free expression, uh, and some who have that right know how to use it. Um, wait, what am I supposed to do? Well, you're supposed to decide whether or not any any conclusion can be validly inferred from those two premises. Uh -huh. Whether you can get some third thing from those by way of logic, by way of deduction. Uh-huh. Um, it seems valid. I, I I don't know what the conclusion would be. Well, um, yes. So so we don't have anything that could be valid or invalid unless we have a conclusion, right? So only an argument is valid or invalid, and we don't have an argument unless we have a conclusion. Meaning? Meaning that you have to decide a conclusion follows from that before you can uh, okay. even judge whether it's valid. Two two propositions standing by themselves aren't really valid or invalid, right? What's valid or invalid is the inference from two premises to a conclusion, okay. right? Um, and so, yeah. You know, when I'm asking you here whether it's valid or in, whether it can be, whether mm -hmm. these two premises can uh, form. A valid argument, meaning that you can val you can infirm uh, deductively uh, a conclusion from the two, you know. Um, okay. That's what the is... question. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, it can't be it can't be negative because both are positive, so it can't be. That's positive. right. So it can't be negative. Mm -hmm. So would it be? Everybody that has that right, but that right is the middle term, so it can't be in the conclusion. Yeah. Well, what is the middle term? Um, free expression. Okay, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some know how to use it wisely. Um, No, give me a clue. Give me a clue, and I will. I think I think you started out in the right way. So we know that it's going to be an affirmative, right? Uh -huh. An affirmative proposition, mm -hmm. which means it's going to be all PSS or all SSP or some PSS or some SSP, okay. right? <clears throat> okay. Um. Mm -hmm. Um, 
How about we skip this one? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think it's sort of I think it's sort of confusing actually. Maybe it's a, a poorly uh constructed one. Uh what is the let, let let's keep let's stay with it, right? And we'll find out what makes it confusing. <clears throat> what is the uh so the, the, the we have all S is M, right? Because uh, M is uh M is the middle term, right? Uh-huh. Has the right to free expression. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And everybody, so like every person, so S is going to be, I guess, people or people. right. Mm-hmm. All people have the right mm-hmm. to free expression. Yeah. All mm-hmm. people have the right to free expression. And some M, right, is P. Yeah. Now, already we see that the middle term is not distributed. Mm-hmm. Right. And so it's actually invalid, right? We know that already. It's invalid. Nothing can come from that because the middle term is not distributed, so it, you cannot infer anything from it. Yeah? Am I right? Yeah. What about the – can't? well, the right itself can't be the middle term. It has to be free expression. Uh, no. The right – has the right to free expression is as ac- is actually the middle term, right? Mm-hmm. Has the right. So, yeah. So all S is P or all S is mm-hmm. M, right? In the first one, all people, mm-hmm. right, uh, is P. That's to say, have has are things that have the right to free expression. If you want to put it that mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. So you got two categories. S is for when we say everybody, we mean every person, right? Uh huh. Has the right to free expression. We have two categories there, all S, that's persons, is P, right, meaning has the right to free expression. Mm-hmm. So M, well, in case, I'm sorry, M, not P, right? <laughs> Having the right to free expression is the middle term. It's not distributed there, right, because that's the form all S is M. We're not, yeah. So having the right to free expression is not distributed there. And when we say some who have the right to free expression know how to use it, right? That sum M is P, right? Mm -hmm. And this also, uh, the middle term is not distributed. And so nothing can be validly concluded from that. We can't get a valid conclusion from that, right? And that sort of runs against our intuition, doesn't it? Because when I look at it, you know, I'm thinking, well, look, if everyone has the right to free expression and some who have that right know how to use it wisely, then it's got to be following that some people who have who have the right um, that some people know how to use it wisely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Some people have the right to free expression, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason the the problem here is that uh, is that would only be valid if we assumed that everybody who has the right to free expression is a person, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Because we're looking for what the S is in the first premise. Mm-hmm. And it, and the category has to be humans, right? Everybody, right? Every person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it could be that everybody has the right to free expression. And that some people who, or not that some people, just that some who have the right, right? Some things who have the right to free expression knows how to use it wisely. But it just turns mm-hmm. out that none of them are people, <laughs> right? As mm-hmm. if maybe some things that have that right are not people, and the only ones that know how to use it wisely are the are the ones that are not people, mm-hmm. right? Right. So it's invalid just because of that. We would need to include another premise to the effect that, uh, you know, uh, everything that has the right to free expression is a person, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. But that's not there. Yeah. yeah. Let's say some of the things that you know, animals or cats or 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 or, or you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe somebody could say gin have the right to free expression, right? <clears throat> or animals have the right to free expression. You could say a real radical animal rights activist could say not only do animals have the right to free expression, they're the only ones who know how to use it wisely. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Humans don't know how to use it wisely at all. We would have right a situation where. <clears throat> these two premises are true, but it's not the case that any person has their uh, uh, knows how to use the right to free expression wisely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, 
that just explains why it seems intuitively like it would be valid, but it's actually not. And it's not valid mm -hmm. because the middle term is not distributed, right? Mm -hmm. That was a little bit long and involved, wasn't it? <laughs> but if we were just keeping it simple and apply the rules, yeah, but uh, and, and, and see what follows from the application of the rules, we wouldn't have to discuss it so much. But like I said, sometimes you apply the rules and what it, it turns out to be that what seems to be a valid is actually not a valid, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. What about the third one? The third one. Um, let's see. Okay, nothing on the internet is private and nothing that is private is anyone else's business. Um, the middle term is private. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, wait, there, 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 there is no affirmative premise. There's no affirmative premise. So well, we already know there's a problem. That's done, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. How about the fourth one? The fourth one. Uh, nobody who truly values uh, the freedom to choose is careless about his choices. And some who are careless uh, about their choices are not deprived. Um, I can't tell if there is a negative, if there's like what's negative and what's not. Nobody okay. who truly is their freedom to choose is careless. That would right. be like no S is P. Perfect. That's what... yep. Okay. And then the second one is um, some who are careless about their choices are not deprived. Um, some I'm going to go with S again, but that's wrong. Some S is not P. Um, Forget about right. the letters. No, yeah, you're right. No, we, we here we actually have to, we have to, we can't forget about the letters because we have an interesting situation. Oh, right? do we? And yeah, right. And that interesting situation is that it seems like we have the choice whether we want to represent as P here, not deprived. Uh -huh. Right, so P just means not deprived, or uh, yeah. P could mean deprived, and the form would be right. Some S is not P. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So how are we going to interpret this as some S is P, where P means n not deprived, right? Mm -hmm. Because to be not deprived can be just a a, a predicate, right? Mm -hmm. Or if we interpret deprived as the predicate here, and we say that the form is some S is not P. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there's this variable here, and the variable will make a difference with regard to the validity of the argument. Oh. Yeah. Um, our first rule is that there must be an affirmative premise, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And the first premise, is it affirmative? No. No. It's negative. So the second premise has to be affirmative, right? Or else the the whole argument will be invalid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so let's say we if if we actually uh, interpret this as an affirmative premise, it'll be some S is P, mm -hmm. and P will have to be standing for not deprived. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah. And that's, so so that's what we have to do, right? P has to mean mm -hmm. not deprived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, therefore, we're set. We know what we have to say about the second one. The second one must be some S is not, uh, is P. Some S is P, right? Mm -hmm. But actually, it's going to be what? Some M is P, yeah? Because the middle term is who are careless about their choices, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, we have no S is M, where yeah. the middle term is is careless about his choices, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and some M is P, right? Um, yeah. Affirmative premise, and we have a distributed middle term because the middle term is distributed in the first premise, yeah? Mm -hmm. No S is M. 
And the next rule is what? If there is a negative a premise, then the conclusion also has to be negative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it, is, it isn't here. Uh, well, the the premise is negative. The first premise is negative, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. So it has to be negative. Mm -hmm. um, so the conclusion has to be negative. It has to be either no SSP or no PSS or uh, some SSP or some S is not P, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so then the next question to ask is whether either of those two are 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 distributed right so s is distributed because it says nobody who truly values the freedom to choose right, mm -hmm. is careless about his choices so no s mm -hmm. is m s is distributed there right mm -hmm. but some who are careless about their choices are not deprived so p is not deprived and it's not distributed yeah mm -hmm. okay so whichever conclusion that we have, we know that it has to be negative, and we know that P cannot be distributed in it, only S. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, mm -hmm. um, and so that means that the conclusion cannot be either no S is P or no P is S because, right, and they would be both distributed. So we can rule those two out. Okay, no, repeat that again about them being both distributed. All right. So we know, okay, so are you with me so far that in the premises only S is distributed but not P? Yeah? Yes. The, 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 the predicate, uh, those who truly value freedom is distributed, but the predicate mm -hmm. not deprived is not distributed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the, in the conclusion – not deprived cannot be distributed, right? Because anything which is distributed in the conclusion has to be distributed in the premise. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right. So, and we also know that the conclusion has to be negative, mm -hmm. right? Which gives us two possibilities, right? Or I'm sorry, mm -hmm. which gives us four possibilities. No S is P, no P is S, some S mm -hmm. is not P, some P is not S, right? Mm -hmm. Whether the conclusion was no S is P or no P is S, both of the terms would be distributed. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. But P cannot be distributed because it's not distributed in the premises here. Mm -hmm. And so the conclusion has to be some S is not P or not some P, P is not S. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It will probably be some S isn't – wait. Um... Careful now. Some you know the answer is already. Some P, some P is not S. Some P is not S. Perfect. Uh -huh. Because that's the one in which S is distributed, right? But P right. is not, right? So if you had the mm -hmm. other way, some S is not P, the conclusion would be distributing mm -hmm. P, but P is not distributed in the premises. Uh -huh. So there we go. That's our mm -hmm. answer. Yeah. That's to say what? Uh, um, some who are not deprived do not uh -huh. truly value the freedom to choose, right? Uh-huh. Right. Nobody who truly values the freedom to choose is careless about his choices. And some who are careless about their choices are not deprived. Therefore, some people who are not deprived do not truly value the freedom to choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So it's, yeah. it's valid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. Okay. Uh, well... Is that fun? <laughs> it is actually. It is. All right, then I'm, uh, our time's up now, so I'm going to let you continue uh, with the rest of them. Uh, really, mm -hmm. the first one you can see is qu quite a bit simpler, but more abstract. Uh, here in the third part, right, exercises three that we've just done, um, these are really getting down to really the application of, of logic. Yeah. Um, particularly for two reasons. One, it's not in variables. It's in concrete uh, prose, so you have to, you know, um, you have to, to, to analyze and see the form, the logical structure underneath that prose. And secondly, because the, 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 the conclusion is not given to you to judge valid or invalid. You have to actually now 
search out using the rules and probe into the logical possibilities. You see how mm -hmm. I did? Uh, yeah. In order to actually, you know, arrive at the conclusion from the premises. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's really where logic is now being used in order to expand, you know, our our knowledge or at least our awareness of what we know. Yeah, to see what mm -hmm. follows from the things that we already take to be true. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I really like this exercise, and I think if you can do this, is a good, really good practice for your for your mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, takes a little while. It tickles a while, but I think once you really start to. Uh, you get more practice, you can do it faster and your ability to see what the logical implications of things are will be more uh, powerful, yeah? Mm -hmm. And hopefully you'll be, you know, a stronger thinker.